This is ABC, and today I'm making a tutorial. This is where we're talking about basic arrays. I've already made two tutorials about arrays, but in both of them, I they weren't b basic tutorials. Those are, they they went were complex, and I'm I bet you they probably confused a few of you guys. So I'm making a basic one to make sure they got the base laid down. So um, this is where we use an example called the bookcase example. So let's say we have a bookcase, and we're going to create a variable. For for, that represents each shelf. The first the variable for the top shelf we're going to call bookcase open bracket zero close bracket. So that will equal the amount of books on top shelf, which in our example is three. And then we'll make another one that represents second shelf book bookcase one, which will equal two, and then next one four, and so on. So. Um, because they have the brackets in there, they're no longer the variables as we know them. Then they become arrays. And you can really treat them as, as normal variables. You can ma make individual things in arrays, you can set them equal to things, you can add to them, you can subtract from them like any other variable. But the thing that makes them different is th the thing between the brackets can change. It can be used, you can use anything to represent it. So for instance, we create another variable, set it equal to zero, and put it within the brackets, then we'll get the top shelf because that variable equals zero. And then, this in this way, you can create a variable and then find other variables uh, values using an array. So in this case, we can create a variable called shelf, and by plugging into the bookcase array, we can find out how many books are on the shelf, depending on what we make the shelf variable. And it can work with anything as long as, as long as the value between the brackets is a number. And another thing, just for notation, is when, you, when if I say, look at, look at an array, and I say the, and you plug in zero in the array, that's, then it has it index 0. Plug in 1, it's index 1, and so on and so on. So the zeroth index in our bookshelf array, our bookcase array, sorry, is 3. The first index is 2. So make sure you understand that. Now there's two concepts I want to make sure you get, I get across. Is If I say bookcase 1, bookcase 2, you need to be able to find out what, what that equals based on my example. And if I say what's the second index in the bookcase array, you also need to be able to find that find out what that is. And then the hardest part is if I have a variable and plug it inside the array, I need you to be able to find what it is in the, in the bookshelf. So keep those in mind and make sure you can do that. So now let's um, get on to the tutorial with a practical example. So we're going to create a program which we can change the value of a variable and then we'll find out how many books there are in the case by changing the value. So, Creation event. Now we're going to set up our array. So we're going to call the array bookcase. And the first zeroth index in the bookcase array is going to be 3, because that's the top layer, layer of the bookcase. Bookcase 1, we're going to say equal to 2. Bookcase 2 equal to 4. Bookcase 3 equal to 0. Case four equal to one. So that's that's all it takes to set up an array in Game Maker. You just list them all out that way. Another program language is it's a little more complicated, but in Game Maker it's remain simple. And now we're going to create a variable called a shelf, and we're going to start off with setting equal to zero. So so and then we're going to draw out. Book case shelf. So we're going to show the value of this on the screen. So if we go into our draw event and we put down draw text, okay. we put that down. Um, this will draw this value on the screen. Now this, this draw text function isn't the, the main reason for this story, so it's not important to understand it, but just know that this will draw this on the screen at these values. That's really all there is to it. Oh, oops. Alright, so now let's create our room, add our object to it, and now when we run it, we set bookshelf to zero. So if we take bookcase shelf, remember shelf equals zero so this should equal book k 
case is zero, make sure you note the connection there. And so we see up here that equals three. So now we should see three up on the screen when we run the, run the game. And there you have it. We see three right there, as we should. Now let's go over another example. Let's say we set shelf equal to two. So same case scenario. We we're printing out book case shelf shelf equals two. So this will equal book case two. And if we look up here, book case two equals four. Okay. And then play it, and it should show four right now. And it does. All right. So that's all to this array tutorial. It's now off the list. I hope this clears up any confusion you might have had about arrays, seeing as my other tutorials were very prone to confuse. Now, I've mentioned my other tutorials, both of them used to multidimensional arrays. I'm not going to explain how to do them right now. You'll have to look at those tutorials for that. But what I will say is that it works the same concept with the bookcase as it does there. Only the bookcase, instead of looking like this, looks like this. Next time we learn to make bookcases like these.